This lecture in Climate and Earth 401 is the second lecture on vorticity, and in this lecture we will look at planetary and relative vorticity. Vorticity is a fundamental description of the fluid flow. It is as fundamental as wind. If you wanted to, you could start this course by defining a fluid in terms of its rotational and irrotational parts, and the rotational parts would be vorticity, and the irrotational parts would be divergence. The flow can be completely described by vorticity and divergence, and in the atmosphere, because the motion is often confined to be more strongly horizontal than vertical, the rotation is often in large-scale flow associated with the horizontal aspects of the flow, and the divergence, as we've seen in earlier lectures, is related to the vertical velocity. So this is an interesting aspect where the horizontal divergence leads to there being a vertical motion. Vorticity is also related to a concept called the circulation, where the vorticity is the measure of rotation linked to a point in a fluid, and the circulation is a measure of rotation around a closed circuit that encloses, say, that point. It's an area average. Circulation is an important theoretical construct, but we will not study it much in this course as I teach it. By definition, vorticity is the curl, del cross, the velocity field. And in this case, we've written the velocity vector as u sub a, where a is representing the absolute velocity, meaning that it is the velocity of the Earth plus the relative velocity of the atmosphere relative to the Earth. Vorticity is a measure of rotation in the fluid. Again, u sub a is the velocity in an inertial coordinate system. Hence, there is a contribution to vorticity due to the rotation of the Earth, and there is a contribution due to the motion relative to the surface of the Earth, which is called the relative vorticity. This is an important distinction to make. The difference between the vorticity due to the rotation of the Earth and the relative vorticity, which is the motion relative to a point on the Earth, or going back to our earlier lectures in the tangential coordinate system in which we use, which the vertical that we use in that coordinate system is the local vertical at whatever point we might be observing. Because in large-scale flows in particular, the flow is dominated by the horizontal motion, we are most interested in the vertical component of vorticity. Recall from the definition of vorticity, if the motion is in the xy plane, you might remember the skater who was holding her arms out, if the motion is in the xy plane, then the rotation is around an axis in the vertical plane. Using our vector notation, we would get this component by taking the dot product with the unit vector in the vertical direction. Hence, we are looking at k dot del cross u. In what plane is the motion? The xy plane. In what direction is the vorticity? The vertical. Relative vorticity is related to the velocity relative to our coordinate system that we are observing at on the surface, uvw. Hence, del cross u is defined as this vector here of dw dy minus dv dz, du dz minus dw dx, dv dx minus du dy. K dot, the vertical component of that, is often called zeta, and it is dv dx minus du dy. Here is a quantity that you should become very familiar with dv dx minus du dy. This is the relative vorticity, zeta. The planetary vorticity is the vorticity due to the rotation of the Earth. If we go back to this figure that we looked at a number of times early in the course, where we talked about the rotation of the Earth and the importance of knowing the radius at any particular latitude, 
and what we were interested in is the rotation around the k unit vector of the local vertical. So here is our tangential coordinate system. Here is the vector of the of the orbital axis here. And what we want is the component of this in the local vertical. We see that this is maximum up here at the pole. It's zero down here at the equator. And it's some value here in between which is f, the Coriolis parameter, which is 2 omega times the sine of the latitude. f, this quantity that we've introduced earlier and then in our scale analysis saw how important it was for large-scale mid-latitude flows. f is the planetary vorticity. It's 2 omega sine of the latitude, which is k dot del cross the velocity of the Earth. This is the planetary vorticity. If we look at numbers here, up here at the pole, it's 1.4 times 10 to the minus 4 per second. So here are the units. This is the units of vorticity. If you go back and look at that definition of, that would come from the units of being, say, du dy. That's going to be meters per second over dy, which will be meters, hence per second. Here at middle latitudes, this is the number that we used in our scaling arguments. It's about 1 times 10 to the minus 4 per second. And at the equator, it's going to be 0. If we go to the southern hemisphere, since the sine of the latitude is going to be negative in this hemisphere, we see that the Earth's vorticity shows up as negative. And when we talked about what is the sine of vorticity, we saw that the relative vorticity had a positive sign up here, which was considered cyclonic, had a negative sign in the southern hemisphere, which is also cyclonic. And the fundamental definition is perhaps is that when we have a cyclone, when we have something that is cyclonic, then the relative vorticity and the Earth's vorticity are of the same sign. And so the northern hemisphere, it would be f times a positive number. And in the southern hemisphere, it would be a minus f times a negative number. Hence, it's always positive, the multiplication of the planetary and the relative vorticity for a cyclonic flow. And a cyclonic flow, it's the type of flow that is associated with low pressure systems, whether it's in the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere. However, the rotation is going to appear to be opposite in the two hemispheres in terms of whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. Hence, the absolute vorticity is equal to the planetary vorticity plus the relative vorticity. If we go through our vector analysis here and decompose the velocity in the absolute coordinate system to the velocity in the relative coordinate system, which is here, u, and the Earth's velocity, which is here, then the vertical component of the absolute vorticity is going to be equal to the vertical component of the Earth's vorticity plus the relative vorticity, and hence the vertical component is dv dx minus du dy plus f, and this is often called eta. This is going to be a place where you are going to want to pay careful attention to the details of the nomenclature. This was zeta. This is eta. Here's our f. And if you don't pay good attention in the accounting problem there, you will make mistakes and be confused. If we look in a little bit more detail at the relative vorticity, then we could say that there are two types. One, there is curvature vorticity, which is due to the turning of the wind flow. That is, the wind direction changes. And that's this intuitive feeling of flow, circular flow, around a low pressure system. This closed circulation that you might associate with a hurricane, you might associate it even with a tornado. Though the dynamics of the two are very different, there is a lot of rotation in each of those flows. This is called a vortex, and it is dominated by this rotational flow. The other type of vorticity is called shear vorticity, which arises from changes in wind speed over horizontal distance. 
we can look at a plot that looks like this, which has lines of constant geopotential pressure. And as I have drawn it here, this is the south-north direction, this is the west-east direction. There would be a delta y here, some value here, and a delta x here. The lines are drawn such that they get closer together the further north we go. Hence the wind speed is going to look something like this. If we were to then say, what's the vorticity here? Well, we're going to have a du dy here. We can have a du dy because you can see that the zonal wind in this direction is increasing as we go from south to north. Hence, if we were to take a delta u and a delta y, then we would get that zeta was non-zero. dv dx in this case is going to be zero because there is in fact no v as this is drawn. If you took and changed this such that maybe this was still x and then this was z height, then that would look a whole lot like the boundary layer model that we set up to try to develop our representation of friction or the viscous force. You can then deduce from that, since the frictional force would leave this close to the surface, that the interaction of the wind with the surface and viscosity is in fact a source of vorticity. You can see something like that perhaps in a dust devil on a small scale. Get some idea of this shear flow. I've put this imaginary stick in the flow and then we're going to watch it change with time and it's going to turn like that. So you can see that the shear flow does in fact cause a turning around a point where the turning was around say the center of this notional stick. Going through this lecture, we have seen what might be viewed as a set of simple deconstructions or a set of simple decisions that really only have you know, two outcomes. We were introduced in the previous lecture to the Helmholtz decomposition and the idea that the curl and the divergence can completely describe the flow. Well, the curl is the vorticity and the divergence is the divergence, hence the vorticity and divergence can describe the flow. These are just two things. But now if we take the vorticity and look at it, then we have the planetary vorticity and the relative vorticity. So we've split that into two. And then for the relative vorticity, we split that into curvature vorticity and shear vorticity. All of these different ideas and definitions will have physical meanings and once you perhaps internalize them and use them a lot, you'll see that they will provide you quick understanding of the physics and the dynamics of what's going on in the atmosphere and will help you in problems ranging from weather forecasts to, for example, understanding how constituents move around. And with that, this is the end of the second part of the vorticity lectures, and it was on planetary and relative vorticity.